Have you noticed or did you know? The province of Quebec, through language laws like Bill 178 and Bill 101, and also the new Bill 14, have virtually made the English language and the English culture into a disease in the province of Quebec, while at the same time demanding that the French language and the French culture be openly and widely accepted in all other parts of Canada outside the province to a degree that extends way beyond common decency and any sense of fairness on every level i.e. in Ontario most places that have been labeled by the French as being bilingual are actually French dominant with the French language taking on the dominant position as uh, having more authority and more prominence within the establishment itself. Examples the Montfort Hospital, the University of Ottawa and the federal government. Have you noticed or did you know Canada's birthday which used to be called Dominion Day but is now called Canada Day is generally celebrated by all proud Canadians in all corners of this great country but in the province of Quebec this great day of celebration was relabeled and designated as official moving day or sign a new le lease day that's right be sure to book your moving truck way in advance as they're hard to come by since everyone's moving on the same day bon fide Canada have you noticed, or did you know, the hiring criteria within the Canadian government at both federal and provincial levels is getting to be more and more bilingual essential, uh, meaning a strong minus A ability to read, write, and speak French is absolutely necessary to qualify for more and more of the highly sought after stable government positions. French is now considered an absolute rather than just an asset. Have you noticed, or did you know, more and more positions outside the federal and provincial governments, i.e. postal workers, ambulance attendants, hospital workers, bus drivers, airplane pilots, and flight attendants, even servers and restaurants now are obliged to have knowledge of French as a required essential rather than what the practice used to be a short time ago when bilingualism was just an asset for most of these positions. Not to mention, it is important to note that unilingual English Canadians cannot advance in their own military past a certain rank without passing a French exam. Have you noticed or did you know that a huge amount of trades workers come across into Ontario and parts of Canada from Quebec in order to apply their trades while at the very same moment the Quebec government through the use of numerous tenacious and inflexible inspectors that dole out hefty fines make it almost impossible for tradespeople from Ontario and other areas to work in the province of Quebec without constantly being harassed, fined and hassled. Have you noticed or did you know that many small communities outside of Quebec, i.e. Eastern Ontario, where the population has a large prominence of French, are conducting many of their community affairs and meetings in French only? The street signs are in French only or in French as a dominant position? Even large Eastern communities like Orleans show many signs of French taking a dominant position. And just like the French did in the province of Quebec, they are now beginning to change the street signs and community names from old age-old English names into French names, which seems to suit a more French cultural concept. Have you noticed, or did you know, the Canadian anthem, when sung in many parts of Canada right now, is mostly sung with the French verses. You know you're Canadian if they play your national anthem, and you can't sing along all the way through because they changed the language. This, in and of itself, wouldn't be so bad, I guess, except that the message in the French verses is more predominantly a French cultural-based message. Therefore, the questions seem to be, who changed this? When did it happen? And who decided that the French cultural message would be the dominant message? Hmm, I don't remember anyone asking me as part of the majority English culture in this country if I was okay with this change. Have you noticed or did you know that many places you call nowadays have a response which is either in French or in French dominant? It turns out that when using certain networks and calling into Canada from many countries now, the call is routed through or switched through one of the only remaining switches in North America, which happens to be located in Quebec. Therefore, callers from Britain, Russia, Germany, all over the world who call Canada uh, get the French version of the standard... The le 1 ou le 0, ainsi que l'indicatif régional avant le numéro que vous désirez joindre. This is a long-distance call. Please dial 1 or 0 as well as the area code for the number you are calling. The, this in turn gives callers to Canada the impression that Canada is a French-dominated country. Have you noticed, or did you know, the so-called Franco-Ontarian flags and license plates popping up all over Ontario? The visual ramification and community implications that are cast from this trend is very reminiscent of the strategy uh, that is employed in the games such as Risk. I'm sure you're familiar with this. It's the world domination strategy game that uses tokens or markers to mark captured ground, which ultimately, once enough captured ground is uh, taken and enough flags are planted, can serve to, as a sign of supremacy by one particular group or faction over the other. Have you noticed, or did you know, 
More and more federal websites have the French first, French on top, and or French on the more dominant left side. Yep, despite the fact that Canada boasts only a 12% portion of the population that uh, speaks and understands only French, a statistic I find difficult to accept within the context that these people live in a country which has English uh, as the uh, country's dominant language, and yet they have zero knowledge of the predominant language in their own country. That would be like someone being born and raised in Russia and not being able to speak Russian. Anyhow, the criteria and semi-new rule that determines which language is used and can be dominant on the federal websites is now determined by where the head office for that department is located. Interestingly enough, more and more of the more strategically important and dominant federal head offices are being located or even relocated where? You guessed it, in the province of Quebec. Have you noticed, or did you know, that Quebec has pseudo-embassies, you know, embassies that usually only full-fledged countries have? Yep, they have embassies uh, scattered around the world in more than 26 different countries. Canadians are paying for Quebec satellite offices, or mini-embassies, in approximately 26 countries, including the cities of Barcelona, Munich, Mumbai, Vienna, Santiago, and Damascus, to name just a few. And get this, these embassies are paid for by Canadian taxpayers. They operate in French first, and uh, just uh, a side note here, a phone call to many real Canadian embassies, the actual ones for the country, around the world, and you will find that most answer in French first also. Once again, giving the impression to the people from around the world who call these Canadian embassies that Canada is a French-dominant country, when in fact, the total a percent of people in Canada that speak and understand French only is, as I've previously pointed out, a mere 12.6%. Again, a statistic that amazes me. Have you noticed, or did you know, that the funds that are allocated to support high-end athletes, like the kind that are training for world events such as the Olympics and so on, uh, receive more funding if they live in the province of Quebec? That's right, the province of Quebec, a province that has a deficit of in the billions while also being a province that receives 50% of the transfer payments over and above all the other provinces put together, spends this influx of Canadian taxpayers' money quite handsomely on the arts and their athletes, while, as a result of sending all this cash to prop up the province of Quebec, the federal side cannot afford to fund its Canadian athletes outside the province of Quebec quite as handsomely. Take a look back and you'll see that many of the athletes that won medals in the past few Olympics were predominantly French Canadians, a direct result of this situation. Meanwhile, the French powers that be, uh, which run the province of Quebec not too long ago, demanded that they, uh, Quebec be allowed to field a team of their own, which would compete under the French fl uh, Quebec fleur-de-lis flag instead of the Canadian flag. Suffice to say, they were turned down. Have you noticed, or did you know, that there are over 200 groups and subgroups in Canada whose mandate it is to turn English-speaking citizens outside the province of Quebec into French-speaking citizens? Yeah, these groups push for more and more goods and services for the French language and culture outside the province of Quebec while promoting the concept of being French inside Quebec. There are also hundreds of groups both inside and outside the province of Quebec, including the federal government itself, whose mandate, it seems, is to help do away with the English language and the English culture inside the province of Quebec, using unfair laws against its English-speaking citizens who are simply trying to live peaceful lives while living in the province of Quebec, Canada. Have you noticed, or did you know, that as a result of Hydro-Quebec's monopoly on electricity generation, the people of Quebec receive a hefty subsidy to the cost of their electricity? A recent study by the Montreal Economic Institute indicates that Hydro-Quebec provides a $7 billion annual subsidy to Quebec electricity consumers, resulting in a rate that is less than 40% of Moncton or Halifax or Toronto or Calgary. This is a policy, of course, which provides less income to the government of Quebec, resulting in a greater need for contributions from all of you from the rest of Canada. Have you noticed, or did you know, the PQ government in the province of Quebec has removed the Canadian flag from the legislature in Quebec? Removed the PQ as uh, first order of business when they were swearing in, uh, you know, their oath of office, uh, decided to, well, what the heck, let's take this out. 
the PQ government has also ordered their MPs not to speak to their federal counterparts in English. And another thing to keep in mind, by the way, this is just history repeating itself. The PQ um, MNAs have a annoying habit of, you know, uh, members of the provincial assembly in Quebec have to swear an oath to Her Majesty the Queen, like any elected representative in any, any legislature in Canada, including at the federal level. And they have this nasty habit of just mumbling the part very, very low, where, where it talks about the Queen, and very often will then add an oath to the people of Quebec, and some will even throw in a Vive la République in there somewhere, just for effect. And they've they've been doing this since I can, as far as I can remember, certainly for at least 15, 20, if not 20 years, if not perhaps even more. And finally, now that you do know, wouldn't you agree that Frenchification of Canada has now been taken way too far? Sure, I have a feeling we can all agree that it's fine and fair and nice and accommodating to our French brethren, but it's totally another thing to allow the majority English in this country to take second place while the French decide on the rules and the manner in which the game is played. Wake up, people. If you don't draw the line in the sand, then when do you expect the French to stop pushing for more and more? So... Quebec will take over more and more. What does Quebec want? More. <laughs> you know. It seems obvious that since the federal government is doing nothing and in some cases actually helping, i.e. the fact that they are not protecting the rights of the English Canadian citizens in the province of Quebec, the only person or people that can stop this push towards the French language and the French culture being dominant over the English language and the English culture in this country is you. Oh, and P.S. Have you noticed? how many billions and billions of tax dollars it is costing us majority Anglo-Canadians to help the French in their quest to force the majority percentage of English people in Canada to be French? Seems like a lot of wasted tax dollars to me.